Hi, I'm Brian, service manager at Whole Latte Love, and this week on Cribs, I'm going to show you through my ECM Synchronica. <laughs> I love it, Brian. <laughs> All right. What do we got? Well, I'm going to take you in through the back here. Uh, and we're going to go through the whole... Most everything that's in there, right? Yep, all yeah. of your major components. I'm not going to go over every single relay on your control board, but okay. I'm going to let you know where everything that, if you ever have to open your machine and do some testing or replace a component, you're going to be able to identify where it is and what it is. All right, let's get at it. So we're going to start right at the back bottom, right where your water comes in. So this is your selector valve, and this is where you would switch between being on plumb or being on your water tank. And that little so you've got levers down there. Yep, a little lever down there. Uh, Counterintuitive, pointing towards the water line hookup means it's on the tank. Uh -huh. So turning over that uh, <laughs> that way, and yes. now we're on the plumb line. That's so. okay. And that plumb line connection is right next door there to the right. right? Yes, sir. Okay. That does pivot. Yeah, I like that. And comes with the hose that actually attaches directly to it. So okay. Very nice. All right, so water comes up. And let's say we're plumbed in. It's going to come in up through there. And now since the selector is set this way, it's going to go up that way and through this braided hose into the pump. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if it was set to the reservoir, it's going to come, actually, oh. well, let's start with the reservoir itself real sure. quick. So on the reservoir, you have a magnetic float sensor. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you can see through there. You see a little yeah. dot in the middle there? That is the magnet itself. Mm -hmm. So as you put the water in, this float goes up, and that magnet will go in front of this sensor right here. So, if you ever have to take apart your reservoir to clean it or anything, just be very mindful of the orientation of that float because that does affect whether or not it senses the water and at what level it will. Because the machine doesn't have water, doesn't think it has water, it's not going to go. Exactly. Okay. So, now on this, this is what we call the res insert or res holder. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you have your magnetic sensor right there. And this is where the tip from your reservoir seats in. Yep. Uh, it's a two-part. It's got a nut on the top that holds it to the frame, and it comes down to this little cup here. Mm -hmm. uh, some machines have a return line that comes in through here. This one does not, so they just have it capped off, a little silicone bubble there. Mm -hmm. um, on the bottom here, you'll see another silicone line, and in the middle of that is your inline filter. So this has a very fine screen in the middle of it. So when the water comes through, if you have some coffee grounds or something that got into your reservoir, this is gonna catch it so that it doesn't go too far into your system. Okay. Okay. On the back here, you can see the two wires that come off. Uh, this will go over to your ground and to your control board. Uh, if you were to disconnect these, it doesn't matter Polarity is not important. You can plug them back in either way. Okay. So now back to the hydraulics. So you got your water coming in from one of your two locations into your pump. And this is a rotary vein pump. Inside here, there's little impellers that spin around and kind of boost that water. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to come out at this T section right here. Right here, you'll see you've got this capillary that comes off. That goes up to your brew pressure gauge. So that's reading the pressure that's coming off of the pump. That's uh, that coiled copper tube there. That yep. Kappa is what the capillary is, okay. Yep, and that comes right up and goes, fishes around through the front of the machine up here to your brew gauge. Mm -hmm. So at this point, this is ever go only ever going to register the pressure that's coming through your pump, meaning if it's on plumb line, uh, say you got two bars of pressure coming from your water inlet, that's what it'll read. Uh, or if you have it jacked up to 10 bars of pressure when you're actually running it, that's what it'll read. But when you have the system shut down, if you have it running on reservoir, it's not uncommon to have it just reading zero because you have right. no pressure in the system. But that's, yeah, that's something unique about this Chronica or a couple other machines is if you're on a plumb line, you got that pressure from your line in the machine all the time. Exactly, yeah. yes. Now let's talk about adjusting the brew pressure because that's 
pretty close by, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so there's two ways that you can adjust pressure in this system, and that's from your pump. That's how much it will put out, mm -hmm. and through your overpressure valve, which is right here. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the uh, maximum capacity, if you will. Okay. If you, you could turn this up to the point where it's delivering 11 bars of pressure, but you could turn this down to nine bars of pressure. Mm -hmm. Your water pressure in the system will only ever get as high as this is set. So you never want to dial this down lower than you have this set, because otherwise you're just going to have a lot of water dumping out through this tube. This drainage system here goes straight down to the dispense tube right on the front of the right. machine. It's going to end up in your drip tray. Exactly. So yeah. you never want that to be lower than this. Okay. It's asking for trouble. And we usually set these, what do you usually set the pressure on the, uh, on the uh, rotary pump there for? Rotary pump is going to be about nine bars of pressure. Nine bar. okay. Yep. We do uh, eight and a half with the blind filter running off of the reservoir. Mm -hmm. When you run it off of the plumb line, that'll usually get about nine bars. Okay. Okay. So, gauge. Mm -hmm. Here we go up into this whole area here we call the valve tree. Uh, you've got a couple points where it'll breach off here. It goes mm -hmm. one of two directions. You're either going to go to your brew boiler or you're going to go to your service boiler. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to plumb your machine in, it's automatically going to start to fill your brew boiler because there's no electronic valve or anything that's going to disrupt the flow into this. Um, it will just, based off of pressure alone, not fill all the way up. You need to activate the brew lever mm -hmm. on your E61 to get it to actually flow all the way through and fill this up completely. But there is nothing that will stop the water flow into here. Okay. So if you had a break on this fitting here, mm -hmm. just for kicks and grins, uh, and you were plumbed in, it's going to keep flowing out of here. There's never going to, there's no safety on there that's going to tell it to stop. So, so if you're plumbed in and going to be away from home for a long time, or maybe yeah. not even so long, you should always be turning off a, a plumbed Exactly, right? yeah. If you're going away for the weekend, definitely a good idea to shut that water off. I'm not saying shut it off every night. Right. That might be a little excessive wear and tear on your shutoff valve, but mm -hmm. Definitely, if you're going to be out of the house for a few days, you'd want to shut your water off just in case. Okay. So, the water's going to come through the pump, through this braided hose line, hit this elbow. Next component right here, this brass piece, mm -hmm. this is a non-return valve. What that means is that there's a spring with a stopper in there. The water can flow up this way, but if it gets pressure coming down this way, it's going to push a stopper down at the end of this component and won't allow the water to go back through the system. Okay. And that's why you're not going to get the pressure on your uh, brew gauge. It's never going to read the pressure that's inside the tank mm -hmm. unless there's an issue with that component and it's letting water back through. Okay. So that's safety component and it also affects what you're seeing on your gauge. Okay. So. You come up here, we've got a little T section, comes off to an elbow, this line, and that's where your water is going into the brew boiler. We went up this way, like we said before, this is the overpressure valve, mm -hmm. also known as an OPV. OPV will vent the excess pressure through the silicone tube. There is a T section right here. Yep. That comes from your vacuum relief valve, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then goes down to the dispense on the front of the machine. And ends up in your drip tray. Yep. Said. yep. Um, general maintenance of the machine, I always suggest, just gonna throw this in there, is to check this fitting here. Because it is plastic and it's near areas of high heat, they do have the tendency to start getting brittle over the years. So, you know, your machine's getting like two, three years old or so, you should definitely start checking this just to make sure it's not getting any cracks or anything like that. If it starts looking really brown and you see little cracks on there, you should probably replace that. Okay. All right, so let's stick to the brew boiler for right now. Talk mm -hmm. about some of the other components on here. You have your thermal limits. So these 
are uh, going to be a safety on the top of your boiler. If it starts to overheat, then it will trip one of these. They act basically look kind of like a breaker. Mm -hmm. um, if you're ever running through troubleshooting and they say, hey, did you try resetting your limits? If you look right at the top here, there's a little black piece that sticks up. Yep. Um, it'll always have a little bit of wiggle to it, so if you see it moving around, that does not mean that it's tripped. Mm -hmm. uh, if you push down on it, you'll feel a very light, like tactile click. Uh, it's not anything major. You're not going to see fireworks shooting up <laughs> saying, yeah, you did it, yeah. but you'll feel a little something in there. Um, and it's the same deal for both of them. One's just for the load end and the other's for your uh, neutral. So if a boiler's not heating, that's a... It's a good place to check. Good place it. to check. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you're not heating and you're not getting any error messages on your PID or anything like that, then that's a good place to check. Okay. Um, over here you have your NTC. This is uh, like the little thermometer for your brewer, brewer that's going to talk to your PID and tell you what the temperature is inside. Mm -hmm. uh, if this component were to fail, that will shoot, shoot off an error message on your PID. Okay. Uh, both of these NTCs will have different error codes, which I will discuss in a different segment. Mm -hmm. But you can get from the error message which one you're going to have an issue with. Okay. Okay. So then on the top here, you'll also see the water comes out the top of the boiler and this elbow through this tube. This is the high end. The hot water is going to come through here. And then you look down here, the lower tube, that's the water is going to recirculate through the system, with the cold water down there, reheating the boiler and just constantly go in that circle, which is what's keeping your group head warm. All that metal out there. Yep. yep. Which leads, helps with your temperature stability, right? That exactly. That whole siphon system kind of just is always happening when the machine is hot, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to jump back down to our valve tree here. Uh -huh. Oh, no, I'm stuck at the non-return valve. <laughs> just oh, kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So right here we have a solenoid valve. So the solenoid valve is an electromagnetic valve. Uh, when it gets power to it, it pulls a little piston up, which opens up the valve. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'll go through that in another segment so you can see how it actually works. The water will come through there, and here we have another non-return valve. Same idea, just there for a little added safety. Uh, once you make it through there, you're gonna come up this line, and that's where the water is gonna go into your service boiler or steam boiler. So. Now that we're on the top of here, we've got a few different components to go through. So obviously you have taps coming off for your hot water and your steam. So this goes to your steam. Your top supply is always gonna be the steam because that's where the steam sits, it's the top of the boiler. And over here is the hot water tap that is coming off of the bottom of the boiler. That's coming off the bottom somewhere. Yep, that's coming down off there. down, if you can see it, but it's right back here. Kind of hard to see back in there. Kind of hard to see idea. back in there, yeah. yeah. So, but the hot water is sure always coming off the bottom. Right? Make sure you descale and you won't have to worry <laughs> about, or treat your water so that you don't need to descale, and then you don't really have to worry about taking that off too horribly often. So, Okay. Okay. Um, so back on the top here, we have our safety valve. Uh, different machines have different safety ratings. Uh, this is a newer Synchronica, so it has the updated higher profile for the steam pressure. So this is rated at two and a half bars. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you had a machine that was prior to 2018, unless you've done the upgrade on your machine, uh, you're gonna have a two bar pressure safety on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, right next to it over here, this is another capillary tube coming off to our steam gauge. It's located right over there. Um, People will ask about the, uh, the coils on here. There's no rhyme or reason behind the coil. That's just kind of how they come prepackaged from their manufacturer. So we uncoil it and place it as needed. Um, these are okay to move, but you gotta be really careful about that because this is soft metal. It can kink easily and you can break it easily. So if you ever need to move it to say, disconnect here, disconnect there, I always recommend just taking it off right here and then just Pushing it out of the Easily, way. Yeah. Ease it out of the way. Yeah. So that way you're not replacing two items. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, again, here's the NTC probe for the service boiler. And we have, this is our liquid level control. Say that five times fast. No. Okay. <laughs> so, what this does is tells the machine whether or not it has water in it. So, this lead goes to the control board, and this entire system is based off of grounding out. So, what happens is this component is a long pin. It's just a piece of metal. Mm -hmm. And what happens is it sits down to uh, around there. Okay. Once the water hits that point, it completes the circuit and tells the machine to stop trying to fill, at which point the pump will stop running and the solenoid will close. Mm -hmm. So this is a good thing to check if you're ever having filling issues. If you're getting a lot more water out of your steam than you used to, it may be that this is starting to get a little full. Mm -hmm. uh, what can happen is you'll get scale buildup on that probe and uh, it won't sense that there's water in there until you get a little bit higher. So this can be easily unscrewed, taken out, and I'll go over that in another segment, but just that basic idea as to how that works. It's very easy to just clean it up. The, the probe itself pretty much never needs to be replaced. It just needs to be cleaned. Now, one thing I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I get asked all the time, hey, I don't want scale in my machine. Why don't I just use reverse osmosis water, which has no minerals in it or distilled water or something like that? That's going to kind of defeat that probe, right? Yes, exactly. That's a very good point. Uh, using RO water has two negative effects. One, obviously, you have no mineral content to have all that sciencey stuff happening in your extraction state, so you're going to have a really, really flat, watery taste of espresso. Also, if there's no mineral content in the water, then there's nothing for all those electrons to travel across, and it'll never sense that this is actually being touched by water. So, It'll keep filling until it times out? <laughs> exactly, yep. It'll yeah. time out on you, or even more fun, it'll <laughs> overpressurize your boiler and it'll start blowing water out of your safety. You don't want that? No, we don't want that. So, <laughs> okay. definitely use the right water. RO mm. water is great for some things, but not for espresso machines. I mean, you can use it if you remineralize it first. Exactly, lots of, yes. Lots of coffee shops do that, I know. Yes, definitely. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the next part of the clock here. Got more of these limits. Uh, same story as over here. You got your little reset over here. Got your load, got your neutral. Easy peasy. Um, these do just screw in, so if you ever need to replace them, you just take your leads off and unscrew them real quick and pop the new ones back in. Okay. Okay. And then next over here we have the unit of a million different names. Uh, <laughs> vacuum relief valve, anti-suction valve, etc., etc., etc. Every manufacturer likes to call them something different. So they all do the same thing though. What's going to happen with this component is as the boiler is heating up, it's going to vent pressure out of here until it hits enough pressure that it seals it. There is a little piston inside here. It's very light and mm -hmm. it just has a little seal around it. Once there's enough pressure built up, it'll pop up and seal that completely. So when the machine's first heating up, you'll see a little bit of water coming out of that discharge in the front right below your E61. Mm -hmm. That's because this is heating up and dispensing down that way. So if you have a lot of steam that keeps coming out of that dispense out, dispense area out of the front there, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times that's what your culprit is, that this isn't sealing properly. Got some scale built up or something. Yeah, yeah, scale build up. And if you turn your machine on and off every day, it's that that little seal. It's just a little O-ring that's on there. Uh, over time, it's just going to get worn well. out. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of not those things that... Not uncommon to replace those. Though. Not uncommon, no. Uh, and it's another one of those things that if you want to be you know, super specific and in-depth about any preventative maintenance, it's okay to take that apart and just clean and lubricate the O-ring. That'll extend the life of that. So. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back down this way. Uh, I never touched on the back side of your pump. So okay. there's a few different components of the pump. You have the actual pump itself, mm -hmm. and then you have underneath this piece is the pump motor, the giant silver part. That thing. And that's what's actually sp uh, spinning the pump. And this is a start capacitor. This is just what gives 
the pump that little kick in the butt to really <laughs> start real quick. Yep. Okay. Because it'll start without this, but it won't start fast. It'd basically uh, act like a very, very gentle pre-infusion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the capacitor kind of acts like a little, stores up some power, right? Exactly. That extra yep. Little kick. Okay. Yeah. You'll see a lot of electronics, they have uh, little lights that'll flash as you're powering it off, and what that is is the unit discharging any stored energy inside their capacitors. Okay. So, some machines, this machine does not do that, but some machines do. Okay, I'm going to move the reservoir back over here, and we're going to come over to our electronics. Okay. I do like how, where they're placed and how they're shielded in the Synchronica. Yes, this is very nice. They're right out in the open, very easy to see, very easy to access. Uh, th on the very bottom, there's two screws on either side of this entire bracket, and you, can, you can't get it too far because the wires aren't really that long, but you can usually get it up enough that you're able to inspect all of the connections without having to rip apart everything to get to it. So okay. that's definitely a very nice feature. Um, so on here, you're going to have your main control board. This is your DC power for your PID. Okay. And then you have two relays. Uh, easy way to remember which one does, goes to which boiler, because this, this is what controls the heat going into them, mm -hmm. or the voltage going to heat them, I should say. Uh, B for back, brew boiler. B, B. So the I, back one's for the brew boiler. It's okay. one of those what we get asked all the time, and that's yeah. just my, my little way of remembering. The back okay. one's for the brew boiler. Uh, okay. It's not going to be the same on every machine, but that applies to this machine. And the front relay is going to go to your service boiler. So that's what the relays, they control those little shots of power out to maintain those very stable temperatures, right? Exactly. So what's going to happen is as the PID is doing its good old algorithm, uh -huh. and uh, sending a signal out is going to relay, relay to the relay mm -hmm. uh, whether or not it should be open or shut. And it'll send that little signal to it, which basically works like a little light switch mm -hmm. and lets the power out and travel to first to your limit and then mm -hmm. out of the limit into your element. And you can sort of see that happening on your PID display, that little dot that's flashing, that's indicating that it's sending out those little bits of power once you're up the top, right? Exactly. Yeah. If you look on the relay, not all relays, but again, mm -hmm. specifically to this one, definitely, you see that little red globe there? Yeah. That is little LED light, and that's going to blink every time it is sending power out of it. Okay. So if it's constantly, when you first start the machine up, Mm -hmm. that light's going to stay solid. Mm -hmm. But as it's doing its pulse heat and just maintaining temperature, you'll see it just flashing. And that's based almost in rhythm with the little dot that you'll see on the PID as well. Okay. So, right, another good thing to know is this little switch right here. So this is your brew switch. If you look at the front, you've got... That, that switch right there. So, yep. so that little plunge, it's going to, little cam there plunges in that yep. and activates that switch back here. Exactly. And that's what sends the signal to the board to kick on the pump and let everything roll. Okay. Okay. Let's see. What else do we got here? Yep. Can't forget. We've mentioned them enough times. We got to see them. Mm. Okay. Our good friend, Mr. PID. So PID is right here, a um, little bit difficult to see, it's in a tight spot. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to get a good view at it, you'd have to remove your entire brew boiler. Uh, also true if you ever need to replace it. So if you need to replace that, you'd need to disconnect all the fittings here and unscrew the boiler from its mount on the side, and then the whole thing will just pull right out. Not a horribly hard task, but mm -hmm. preferably we don't want to do that. Okay. So, um, but obviously you can see all your wires coming in and out of here. Uh, the wires that go to, see these two connections here, those are yep. to your NTC probes. And sure. then okay. you've got other wires in here. They are going to the DC power box in the front or on the other side there. Mm -hmm. And a couple more that go to the board. So, yeah, a lot of wires in there. Again, I'm not, not going too far in here. 
Oh, and since I'm looking right at it right here, on this Synchronic anyways, we do have a drain on the brew boiler, right? Yes, we do. Uh, older Synchronicas did not come with this feature on them. Uh, the newer ones do. So it's something to keep in mind if you I forget the exact uh, date that they made the switch at, at this point, but uh, if you have an older Synchronica and you need to replace this boiler, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you articulate which year you're looking to replace because that does make a difference. There's different ports on the bottom for this. Okay. So. Okay. Um, but one of those yeah, so little upgrades ECM's made over the years to this machine. Yes, definitely. That's a really nice one to have, especially with this machine with how easy it is to take just that side panel off. You just and drain right there. Nice. Never hurts to do a little refresh or going sure. out of town, want to empty it out for storage. It's perfect. Okay. All right. So you know, look real quick on the front. You got a couple things going on here. Mm -hmm. Got the green lamp, the orange lamp, and the power switch. Mm -hmm. and those are all right underneath your PID. So power lamp, this will activate when you turn the machine on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just saying, yes, I know that I have power. Yeah, okay. Okay. Then you have your power switch and the orange indicator lamp. Way back in there. Yep. Way back in there. Um, this is a little tight, but you can actually, if you ever had to, say your lamp went out uh, and you need to replace that, or if you're having problems with your switch, uh, you can still remove all of this without having to remove the boiler. Uh, it definitely helps if you have tiny hands like I do. Um, I was born for this industry, so uh, yeah, it's not very common that you need to replace the lamps unless you keep your machine on all the time. You know, obviously I'll limit the life of the lamp, but you know, I've seen machines that are over 10 years old and they haven't had to replace their lamps, so okay. you know. Any? But sometimes things happen. Okay. Okay. Anything else we want to go over? Or I you think that... pretty much sums that, up the uh, yeah. internal guts here, huh? Yeah, that gets you a little, little sneak peek at all the components <laughs> in here, so... <laughs> all right. Brian, thanks so much for taking us through the internal components on the ECM Synchronica. My pleasure.